Hi everybody, my name is Nathan Beale and this video is going to show you how to show educators how to use Notebook LM, an artificial intelligence platform, to help support you in answering student questions and managing your course material, some of your course material. So first of all, we log into notebooklm.google.com and if you just um, do a Google search for Notebook LM, um, you'll be able to find it and as long as you've got a Google or Gmail account you'll be able to access this currently for free because it's in experimental mode. Now what we're going to do first of all is set up a new notebook. So new notebooks are I guess little containers where you can upload up to 50 different sources into the um, notebook and when you do searches for information it'll find it out of those notebooks. Um, out of those sources within that notebook. So first of all, we're going to open up a new notebook and I'm going to give it a title. So you can title it according to the course that you're teaching or um, just you can have several courses within here, depends as to how you want to organize it. But I'm just going to do it to a course I'm teaching at the moment called COU 5105. And so that is my course that I'm teaching. So what I want to do now is I want to upload the assignments or assessments into the course, so the assessment tasks. So I click on Add Sources, a source here, um, which is, here's an assignment. So I'm going to drag and drop that assignment into the source. So what it's doing now is uploading that information into it. And then it's going to give me a summary. Okay, so here's a summary. And I'm going to do that with another subject as well, another assessment as well. So the portfolio assessment. So I'm going to add that, drag and, whoops, I need to first of all um, click on the, the little button to add sources. And then I'm going to drag and drop this one into it as well. And it's also going to provide, upload that document into the source as well. Okay, so I've got two assessments, but as you can see now, they both say the same thing, assignment. Um, so it's a little bit hard to, to just differentiate. So what I can do is point at it without clicking and it'll show me the name of the source. But I wanna be a little bit more effective, time efficient. So I'm going to, here's the source. Um, I'm gonna call it assignment two. So rename, so I click on these three dots, rename it as, um, I'll call it A2 short for assignment, assessment two. And then I'm going to hit save. I'm gonna do this with the other one as well. A1. Okay, it takes a little while. Now, if I ask a question of the assignment, it's going to basically answer from both the assignments. Now I can, I can ask it to please summarize both assessments. Please summarize both assessments. And it's going to read through those assessments and provide a bit of a summary for me. Now there's probably no real use case for this apart from if I'm initially familiarizing myself with the assessments for the first time. But apart from that, I wouldn't probably typically summarize both assessments such as this. Okay, so here's a summary. And what you'll notice is um, it has um, little numbers. Now these numbers go to where it's pulling that information from. Okay, if I just point at it without doing anything, I can simply um, see some information. Or if I click on it, it'll show me where it's taken that information from and give me the context around it as well. So that's quite useful. But what I wanna do first of all is show you some potential use cases. So for instance, if I unselect that, then it's gonna only gonna answer from this particular assessment. So what I'm gonna do is ask the um, chat, what, what are some potential questions students might ask about this assessment. Okay, now it's reading and thinking. And it's going to provide me some questions that students might ask. Okay. 
Okay. Um, can I choose a fictional character? This is not. Um, are there any restrictions on the type of famous person we can choose? Um, and then it says, um, then it gives a potential answer. Okay, so I could um, put out some, put some of these questions into an FAQ for students. I can also um, ask it to provide some suggested answers. Provide me with suggested answers to these questions. Now, one of the other things you can do is when students ask you questions, so in a forum or something, they ask you a question, you can come back here and ask this the question. Now, um, and sometimes the answers are really good that you could potentially utilize um, or rewrite in your own words, but um, it'll provide just some guidance in terms of how to answer and hopefully in a helpful way. Now, I'd always recommend people check the answers to make sure that the answers actually do align with the, the marking um, task and the, the rubric, um, but certainly that's, um, it's a really useful um, thing to do is to, to, to ask the answers. So here is, um, you know, I've, I've asked it to answer some of these questions. Can I choose a fictional or does it have to be real? The instructions specify that students should select a famous person. So it goes back to the instructions. This suggests that the subject should be a real person as fictional characters would generally wouldn't have developmental information in the public domain in the same way. Okay, so that's quite a good, quite a good answer. Um, and again, you can have a look at some of these um, answers, but yeah, check out, the, check out the question, check out the answers, and then you can use this as a form of FAQ. Okay, um, so again, here's a question. What happens if I go over or under the limit? The instruc instructions allow a 10% minute le 10 leeway on either side of the 2,500 word limit. However, exceeding or falling short of the limit might significantly impact the grade. Remember that each section of the assessment has specific word allocations and it gives examples. Okay, there's an example and they've given several examples. Staying within these individual section limits is important. Okay, so really useful type of um, in information. Um, but yeah, you can upload your subject material, your content in here as well. You know, if you've got sort of study guides or content and that also enables you to answer questions, develop, um, develop tutorials. So I could sort of say, um, develop a tutorial or a scaffold. Let's develop a scaffold to address the assessment. Uh, assessment task. Um, I can also ask to, well, if I'm preparing the assessment for the first time, I can ask it to provide me a critique. What are some strengths and weaknesses and what are some suggestions for how to enhance this assessment? I can also ask it to provide me with a marking rubric based on the assessment task. So it's got a whole range of different uses that you can use this particular thing for. Um, okay, what's this scaffold? Okay. Um, so it's Okay, so it's potentially a useful scaffold. It's actually based very closely to the question itself. So the task itself was probably really well scaffolded in the first place. Um, but yeah, so that's that's useful. Um, and I won't ask for a marking rubric because it's already got a rubric on it. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments whether you can come up with any ideas as to what other types of questions um, educators can ask the the task um, the task sheet to as a way of helping to enhance our answers to students or helping to enhance the quality of the actual task sheet and rubric in itself now um, again another option you have which i have done is actually create a video like this but create it for students so it'll actually save students asking me questions and waiting for you know me to get to their answers when and and therefore they've lost momentum where they can actually upload this these um, assessments tasks and actually ask the the questions themselves so for instance i'll give you an example of a question a student might ask um, so one of this request this assessment is based on psychobiography where they have to link do based on a developmental theory so it's a developmental subject in counseling so i'm going to ask um, can I draw from more 
than one developmental theory. So, it's, so they're only supposed to only use one, so let's see what it says. It's very clear that you must select one. Okay, so it's reiterated. Okay, so now I'm going to say, can I draw on more than one stage in a developmental, in one, in my chosen develop, no, chosen developmental theory. While using, while you are limited to using one of the three th um, theories, the sources don't explicitly restrict you to drawing on multiple, on drawing on multiple stages within your chosen theory. So, in fact, doing so is likely to craft a more thorough analysis. Here's why, and then give some reasoning. Okay, so this is this is really quite helpful. Um, I've just I haven't gone in depth with looking at this um, thing in particular, and again, I, what I'll be saying to students is go back and have a look you know, at the task. So you can click on here and see why it's drawing from this particular um, air, um, answer, how it's drawing the answer. And also recognize that any answers you get from here have to be subjected to the, the actual assessment task because students are gonna be marked not on this answer, which may or may not be accurate, but actually on the task itself. So really highlight the students that don't assume it's gospel, gospel truth, but that you can, um, that you need to critically evaluate the result, the answer you're getting as well, based on comparing that with the task itself. But generally I found the answers to be really, really high quality. Um, and in fact, better quality than I would have probably given as, as in my own examples, um, responses to students. So again, here's another way, use case of using um, Google Notebook LM um, to both, to support, to reduce the, the time lag between when students get answers from when they're having their queries and to, um, and actually help guide them. Um, you might be able to even suggest some prompts for them that they might prompt the, um, the task, um, prompt this within the task to try and have, gain a better understanding of the task um, to guide their research. Okay, so hopefully that's a helpful um, introduction to Notebook LM. And as I mentioned before, please feel free to share any questions or comments or suggestions on how you might use this um, within your own um, teacher space to, to support your own um, teaching or to support student learning and interpretation of the assessment tasks. Thanks very much.